c'était le... It is a real pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. I always count it a privilege whenever I have the opportunity to stand before a group of students in an assembly such as this. You know, most of you are now at the point in life when you're making the decisions that are going to determine your philosophy and your attitude toward life. It was in the early teenage years that unfortunately I made some wrong decisions. I made the decision to turn my back on everything that my church and my parents had tried to teach me. My idea was, I'm going to live life like I want to live it, and I don't care what anybody else thinks or anybody else says. Well, it wasn't until I was 19 that one evening in a small church, I came to the conclusion that if I was really going to get what I wanted out of life, I'd have to change that kind of an attitude. Today, I'm not here to prove anyone or anything right or wrong, but I want to talk to you about some ideas and attitudes that are being communicated through the means of music. And I hope that together we can stop and think about some serious issues that face you as the youth of America. It's possible I could walk out on this stage today, deliver a speech, mocking the flag or ridiculing some of the leaders of our government, and I suppose there are some of you who might not say a word. Perhaps I could stand here and curse God or use profanity without upsetting some of you, or maybe I could take my draft card out of my pocket, stand here and defiantly tear it up in pieces, and I suppose there'd be some of you who wouldn't say a thing. But there's one thing of which I am reasonably certain. If I were to walk out here today and just dare to say one word, against the Beatles, Stones, Jimi Hendrix, Steppenwolf, Iron Butterfly, Led Zeppelin, the Raiders of the Doors, some of you would want to come up here and tear me from limb to limb. <laughs> now, The question I'd like to ask is this. I wonder, would that really be right, or perhaps would it illustrate that this thing called rock and roll is something more than just a form of music?
What is the music called rock and roll that is sweeping the world off of its feet and deafening the ears of the faculty? I'd like to be very specific. I'm not here really to talk about all popular music, but a certain kind of music that because of the instruments, musical arrangement, or the lyrics can be referred to as hard rock music. Now, when I say instrument, I'm sure the first thing many of you think of is the guitar, and in the beginning this was the basic rock instrument. The first groups had lead, rhythm, bass, drums. Later on, they added saxophones, pianos, brass ensembles, but the Beatles kept the trend to what's called the small combo sound, which has really kept rock and roll popular. Back when some of your parents wanted to dance, why? Well, they had to go out and hire a 30-piece orchestra. But today, uh, four young men, sometimes, though not always, with little formal musical training, but lots of hair, can get together and provide a danceable rhythm. In fact, it's been estimated that right now there are over 100,000 rock bands in America. Now, I said musical arrangement, and by this I mean that rhythmically, from a musical standpoint, you can make most any song a rock song if you use one of two techniques. One of these is syncopation, and the other is pulsation. Now, pulsation is the steady, heavy, throbbing sound you think of when you think of rock. It was first introduced by such groups as the Beach Boys, and it was originally referred to as the West Coast Surfing Sound. Now, in the last several years, as a result of the soul and blues influence in rock, there's been a trend to slow down this pulsation. A song doesn't have to be fast to be rock and roll. Take, for example, a tempo like this. One, two, three, four. Now, it doesn't sound very fast, but it can be rock if you add the pulse and the throb of rock. You could slow that tempo down further and use triplets as they used to do in some of the older style rock songs and you'd get this effect. Now, I said the other tempo was syncopation, and for those of you who have studied music, this primarily means that when you have a song written in 4-4 time, you place the accent on the offbeat, which creates this effect. Now, <laughs> I'd like you to imagine with me for a moment that you were just going to sit down and write a rock and roll song. What would you write about? Aren't you glad mom and dad don't know?
you have a wide variety of subjects you could choose from. You might write a song about love. <laughs> of course, now it wouldn't be love. Well, you know, love like in the old days when Mr. Jones and Mr. Hornbeck were around. <laughs> Of course, you know, way, way back then, uh, <laughs> when Mr. Jones and Mr. Hornbeck were singing about love, <laughs> to them, love was sort of like crooning a tune in the month of June under the moon. Well, it sure isn't like that anymore. <laughs> and I really don't intend to be funny. I'm quite serious right now. Today, as either the doors singing, Come on, baby, light my fire, or the stones singing, Let's spend the night together, or Gary Puck and the Union Gap singing, Lady Willpower, it's now or never. Give your love to me. I know you want to see me, but you're afraid of what I might have on my mind. Or every time I make a move to love you, one, two, three, red light, you stop me and jam up and jelly tight. You won't say you will, but there's a chance that you might. Or a of course, of course, uh, there's always Mary Hill down in Cherry Hill Park, or, or the Raiders singing, let me, let me, baby, don't you get me, or the Beatles singing, why don't we do it in the road, no one will be looking, or we could take, for an example, a song that... Uh, A song that not long ago was the number one song in the whole country by the Stones about those honky-tonk women. And the first line in the first verse says, <laughs> or, uh, well, you know, there's been some uh, hippie-type groups that have used rock as a medium to get across a message of telling young people to turn on with drugs. Of course, they don't come right out and say it. <laughs> They did your teachers to know what they're singing about. Uh, but they hide the message in the song. For example, the Amboy Duke suggested you take a journey to the center of your mind. Steppenwolf says, take a magic carpet ride and don't step on the grass, Sam. And I think I'll skip the words to the pusher. Or, uh, <laughs> well, let's take a Beatles song that a while back was the number one song in the whole country. Get back. Jojo left his home in Tucson, Arizona. For some California grass. <laughs> it's not the kind you mow either. <laughs> Where did it all get started? Well, in 1954, there was a song. One, two, three, four, five o'clock, rock around the clock. And along came Elvis Presley and the Beatles. And what, you know, 15 years ago, adults were saying, ah, rock and roll is just a fad. It's just a stage they're going through. Parents said, Hang on, Bing Crosby will be back again. But uh, <laughs> in spite of some help he got from Lawrence Welk, uh, they didn't change things much. Rock and roll is here today. And in fact, rock and roll has become the major form of communication among the youth of America. And not only America, the whole world. I sat down one day at a restaurant in India, rock music. Jakarta, Indonesia, one evening, there were four bands in my hotel. A Saturday in Japan, I went to watch color TV, eight straight hours, a Japanese battle of the bands. Walk down the streets of London or Paris or Singapore, teenagers have a transistor to their ears just like the streets of America. A tea house in Tokyo, a discotheque in Dallas, wherever I've been, I've heard rock music. Now, of course, when you talk about rock, you think in terms of the different types of sounds, such as Memphis sound, Atlanta sound, New York sound, Motown sound, Chicago sound, West Coast sound, California sound, San Francisco sound, English sound, British sound, Mercy sound, 
Jug rock, raga rock, broke rock, country rock, folk rock, acid rock. Psychedelic music performed at the total environment dance. Light shows and strobes in the crowd and an ear-splitting kind of music. And the effect is to simulate an hallucinogenic experience. In fact, they've conducted some experiments that show in the right acoustic environment with a proper synchronization of the strobes and the beaten sound of the music, they can induce within the mind a mental condition paralleling that of LSD. It's uh, <laughs> sort of a way to blow your mind on music. find that most people have never stopped to think about the tremendous power of music. Now, when you hear someone speak, you must listen to it carefully to understand it. The music isn't like that. Music gets a hold of you physically. Ever catch yourself tapping your fingers to a melody? You look down, <laughs> your fingers just tapping away. You didn't even know it. You see, you weren't thinking about it, but the music got a hold of you. And this is where rock and roll comes in. Because hard rock is the first popular music ever written. Not really to be heard, but to be felt. In other words, it's not necessarily the melodic composition or the chromatic arrangement of the chords. It's the beat, the sound. Actually, the tactile sensation it gives the human body. That's why it must be played so loudly. It's not music you hear, it's music you feel. And it's the beat that is captivating to so many young people. But of course, once a young person has been captivated by the beat, the mind is open to the suggestion of whatever the lyrics may say. 
And rock is a big thing. A national agency took a poll recently and discovered that 87% of all young people make a steady diet of rock music. The advertising industry did a survey recently and found out the average young person listens to the radio over five hours a day. Well, I've talked with some young people who get up with it in the clock radio in the morning. They dress and eat by it. Car radio on the way to school. They get a transistor out in between classes in the lunch period. And car radio on the way home. Study by the night. Put a transistor under the pillow and go to sleep with it at night, too. Well, if you think about it, you'll see that Really, there's nothing in America today that has more contact with more young people than does rock and roll. And because of this, there are social scientists who believe that rock music is the most powerful influence in this country on the political, social, and moral values of youth. Music today is not only an expression of our culture, but it's a cultural catalyst at work in our society, formulating certain teenage folkways. You see, it's because that some of you listen to so much rock music every day that social scientists say it's right there in the associations and in the words of the song that you get a lot of your ideas and even some of your moral and social values. Not only are you influenced by the music, but through the music, you influence America. Now, in a democracy, we vote in elections for the people and things we believe in. And when you walk in the store and buy a record, in a way, it's like voting in an election. Because when you buy that record, at the consumer market level, you financially support the message of that song. Now, that doesn't mean that you necessarily approve of what that song says or you necessarily agree with its lyrics, but tacit approval is implied because when you purchase it, you promote it. And in this way, in the type of records that you buy, you help to judge and to choose the type of message that the youth of America will hear. Someday, very soon, you'll be out of school and you'll be the leaders of this country. But today in your music, you are helping to shape the future of America. And the question obviously becomes, how are you voting? This past year, one of the most disgusting and disgraceful things in rock music history occurred. Every year, the Beatles are voted the number one spot in international polls. But for the last couple of years in America, by the record sales and polls, one of the top rock bands in America has been Jim Morrison and the Doors. Jim Morrison, as many of you know, has a pair of cobra leather skin-tight pants and a little act that he puts on in Doors performances. <laughs> He's been getting by with it for quite a while until Miami. Unfortunately, I can't tell the whole story. It's not fit to repeat in public, but I will say this. 14,000 young people had paid $6 a ticket to come to a Doors performance, and uh, at least one periodical judged the crowd to be between the ages of 12 to 14. According to the warrant for his arrest filed by the state attorney's office, in the performance, Jim Morrison decided that not only would he take off his clothes, but also engage in forms of sex perversion while 14,000 young people sat and watched. And when it happened, I said to myself, I wonder what the youth of America will do about it. Well, it wasn't but a few weeks after that that The Doors put out their next album, and before it was even released, advanced sale orders had already earned it a gold record. Morrison did that, and some of the young people of America turned around and gave him a million bucks. Now, you can say he, that they bought the record for the music and not for what he did, and that may be true. But in buying that record, it was a financial vote of confidence. And let's face it, Morrison got a good deal of the money, and it's helped the Doors to continue promoting their moral philosophy to many young people. I think in the moral crisis of today's music, it was an honest opportunity for the youth of America to speak out, and that's the way some of them voted. I was in Vietnam last year. One evening in the city of Saigon, I took the elevator to the roof of the Caravelle Hotel, which is the tallest hotel in the city. When I got to the top, I stepped onto an observation platform where I could look out into the battlefields. You know, there's no night in war. There's no darkness. They shot flares into the sky to light up the horizon so that young men like you and me could see how to kill and how to die. I'm not saying I agree or disagree with the war, but I am saying before my own eyes I saw the seriousness of the hour that you and I live in. 
An hour, I believe, that demands the youth of America to stop and think seriously. After speaking in hundreds of schools, I can honestly say that I believe in the youth of this country. I believe that the majority of you want the best for yourself and the best for America, but I am disturbed about some things, as I think some other young people are. On the Rolling Stones album, Beggar's Banquet, there's a song entitled Street Fighting Man that says, when summertime comes, it's right for fighting in the streets, boy. And that's not fist fights. The song has been used by many as an anthem for the violent revolutionary overthrow of the government. Back east, there's a group called the Motor City Five who delight whenever possible in concluding their performances by taking the American flag and trampling on it and burning it. Well, even the Jefferson Airplane in their latest release sing, come all you volunteers of America, you've got to revolution, you've got to revolution. And when I hear songs like this, I wonder if it's the sort of thing that the youth of America really believe in. Do you think it's right that while 19-year-old boys, some of them your friends and some of them your brothers, die in a jungle in Vietnam, that at the same time, some young people here at home, and maybe some of you, buy the record albums of some acid head freaked out underground and heavy rock groups who try to tell young people that the police are a bunch of pigs and your parents don't love you. Anybody over 30 is out of it. Make a mockery of God and religion and kick out the establishment. Blow your mind on drugs. Do your own thing. Tear down the whole country if you feel like it. A lot of them are saying that. I don't believe that most of the young people in this country agree with an irresponsible attitude like that. So the next time you walk in a record store, stop and think for a moment. Don't buy that record just because it's popular or just because it's on the top 40, but think for a minute about who gets your money when you buy that record. And stop and think about the words. Honestly ask yourself if those words are the kind of thing that your church and your parents and your school have taught you as ideals to believe in, and if those are the ideals you want to represent the youth of America. I'm asking you today to be honest and stop and think about some of your singers and some of your songs, to evaluate them. I'm confident that if you'll do this, that the decency and the freedom America has stood for will have a lot brighter future. And young people, the future of this country is in your hands. And because your music is so much a part of your lives, the future of America may be determined through what is said in your music. And the moral responsibility belongs to you, not mom and dad. You buy the records. And it's up to you to choose what message you want your songs to convey. I'm not asking you to make easy decisions but I'm asking you to make some honest decisions for your sake and for America's sake. Before you buy that record and before you listen to it, stop and think for a moment because the moral future of this country may well depend upon whether or not you do. It is my sincere hope that many of you will. Thank you for being a fine audience, and thank you very much for your time and attention.